So welcome to um, the Dark Arts of OSINT. Um, this would be Dr. Noah Schiffman, uh, AKA Security Freak. Uh, he is the academic of our team, uh, the one who actually finished college. Um, <laughs> Yes, he is way more intelligent than I am, a snappy dresser, and uh, an absolutely wonderful guy. Um, Dude, that's so not cool. I, can I have a red shirt kick the shit out of this guy over here? Evan Davison. It's, yeah, sorry. Okay. Phone is off. All right, there we go. Not like they didn't tell us that earlier. So, um, and I'm Skydog, of course, uh, by the picture there. Uh, we are um, the part shot. of the Dead Bunny Club, whether you've heard of that or not, is the pseudo-philanthropic arm of everything Skydog does. Um, so we, uh, we got together, uh, I, I met you uh, a couple years ago, and we found that we're, we're fast friends and we have a, a lot of fun getting together uh, and getting into major trouble. Sometimes so, a little uh, more than friends. Do what? Sometimes a little more than friends. We yeah. weren't going to talk about sorry, it. I took sorry, that out sorry. of the presenter right, notes, I, I just, dude. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. He's a great cuddler, though. Yes. So, um, uh, hey. so um, as they announced earlier, uh, this is my 11th year coming to DEF CON. Uh, I actually was back in the AP days. Who's been to the AP days? <laughs> Around the applause. Everyone's a newbie. That's wonderful. Um, I just heard about DEF CON like two weeks ago. Two weeks ago? Yeah, yeah. that's how that works. Yeah. Um, so I get to celebrate, uh, ironically, at my uh, 11th year here. I've actually been a goon for nine years. Uh, for my uh, 11th year here, I get to three uh, celebrate three firsts, which is kind of odd. It's not losing my virginity. But... Uh, Don't worry, it'll happen soon. I'm hoping. I'm really holding <laughs> out. One day. I understand anyway. I have to talk to a girl, though, and I'm not ready for that. <laughs> so, uh, the first one, it was really wonderful. Uh, my son got to participate in DEF CON Kids. I'm old enough now that uh, I have offspring. Cooper. Uh, he got to celebrate into, uh, uh, in DEF CON Kids. He placed fourth in social engineering and second in Hacker Jeopardy. So. Yeah. Definitely a first for me. My second would be my first Mohawk ever. I got to participate in Mo uh, Mohawk Con this year, so a round of applause for those guys. They did an absolutely wonderful job. I had to leave Vanderbilt to actually be able to make that one happen. And of course, my third is actually being accepted to speak at DEF CON, which is a great honor. I did find out that they do require you to submit a paper. That's why it took me so long. Uh, I didn't read the fine print, but uh, here we are. So, we're talking about our live demo. Uh, yeah. So, um, there's this live demo thing that uh, maybe kind of discussed in the CFP and brochure. Well, so I don't know how many people here are familiar with something called MATLAB or R or I don't know other letters of the alphabet. Um, yes. What's your favorite letter? No. So I didn't have a, a licensed copy of MATLAB and went with Octave and uh, got into a battle with Octave and Octave won and I lost. So uh, we're doing a different kind of live demo that's sort of audience participation based. So it's going to be really fun and um, everyone's going to get to meet people sitting next to you going to be a fun icebreaker opportunity. No, it's not. It's actually, it just, but it's going to be a demo that we can all participate in and make a point. So, uh, I hate Octave. Hate it. Okay. So that's all. Um, yeah. Ready? No, yeah. Just, just, whatever. Get loose. Say Here something. we go. So, our, our talk today is about the dark arts of OSINT. So, the path we're going to take, we're going to talk about what is OSINT. Um, we're going to move on to, Evan, if you call me again, I'll fucking kill you. I swear. Fucking kill you. Anyway, I digress. Um, so we're going to speak about what is OSINT. Uh, we're going to talk about some acquisition tools and techniques. Uh, I am then going to sit down and the guy with the math background is going to speak about anonymizing data. And then, then huh? That you, you, oh, you don't remember? I thought, <laughs> I'm going to leave the stage and Noah's going to speak about anonymizing and de-anonymizing data. 
So open source intelligence. Do we have? I guess I have to hit the button, don't I? Open source intelligence. Thank you for putting the pause in there. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Did you get the transitions in there? Uh, some. Okay. I did some. Made, okay. I forgot. I don't know. It was the cool one that wipes. It, uh, the dissolves. The dissolve. You pay for the dissolve. That's good. Yeah. So what is open source intelligence? Essentially, open source intelligence is anything out there that you can reach without having to be a Leo or something similar. Uh, or belong to a large organization and require paperwork to get to it. It's anything you can get to online or readily available. Well, why do you care? Who had a picture taken of him this weekend by some jackass with a camera? Not one of our photographers, but someone with a phone or whatever. Okay, guess what? You're now you know, hooked up with open source. Uh, uh, the information is out there. You appear in a picture. Now it's something I can catalog and index. So congratulations. Prism. <laughs> We weren't going to talk Sorry. about it. And uh, so uh, how can it be optimized? We're looking at uh, big data sets. One of the things that uh, Noah's going to get to is taking the big data sets and, and crunching the numbers and actually extracting some information, uh, some interesting information uh, out of what's available, readily available. So uh, OSINT comprises many things. One of them would be text whether it is uh, emails that you sent back in 73 where you were talking about something bizarre. Was it? Did, did you send anything back? Never mind. Uh, I've gone back actually and found some of the things that I've done on forums uh, way, way, way back in the day using a different name <coughs> that uh, uh, I was able to actually find online uh, things that uh, probably would have shown how ignorant I was at the time. But anyway, you have text that's out there that can be uh, searched for. You also have imagery. We have Facebook. We have uh, uh, appearing at DEF CON. If you don't realize it or not, you probably had a picture taken of you at some point in time that appears there. Uh, video. Uh, I think uh, last night Evan played the little VR system where you had to move around the map and begin to do the robot, which was an absolute hoot, which will appear on YouTube with uh, a little bit of captioning later on. Uh, yeah, the black hat robot, absolutely. Um, so we also have audio. Uh, the video that we have here of this presentation is currently available on DVD later. But uh, they also put the audio uh, uh, up of that so you can, uh, if you're not into uh, driving looking at your iPhone, you can listen to the audio. And then you have geospatial, which um, would be the images you take from a device that's GPS enabled that records your longitude and latitude and altitude and fun things like that. Uh, other information that doesn't always get removed from imagery when it's put online. Uh, there is a certain signal to noise ratio. If you've been online and you've looked for data, uh, a lot of times the aggregators of that data uh, may have some really bizarre things that show up. You know, no, I, lived, I never lived in Henderson, Nevada, but for some reason my name and my phone number are associated with that. So there's just a certain amount of it that's out there that doesn't really fall into place correctly. Uh, you have to go through and, and decrease the, uh, the noise to get the true signal. So out of that, once you clean up enough data, you're able to go through and put enough things together, layer them together, find where the high points in the, the graph appear, you will find actionable data. Anyone that's actually in the law enforcement community, which I'm not, uh, anyone who is in that community realizes that when enough data is collected, it becomes actionable and then it becomes intelligence, something that can be used to actually do something. Prism. So, um, sorry, I got a little cough there. Uh, the history and origins of, of uh, listen, you leave it? No, no, no. Furball. Uh, no, I don't want to drink anymore. Not yet. Wait till you get on stage. Uh, so print media, uh, you know, originally you had newspaper clippings from other parts of the uh, United States. Someone would catalog those things and actually write up a report on it. Uh, we moved into the radio age. Things were actually transcribed and then cataloged and indexed. Uh, the search time on information like that was a little long if you want to complain about Oracle or MySQL or something like that. Uh, the paper version of it really sucked. Uh, we moved to television, things that got uh, compressed down to uh, uh, videotape and things of that nature. Uh, I, like I said, I recently worked for Vanderbilt. They have the largest compendium of news broadcasts. They go back as farther than anyone else. Uh, that information can uh, also be searched by metadata. 
So, and then of course we're down to the internet age where every jackass can get out there and uh, dance and then put online uh, their, their robot yeah, at a large security conference. That's coming back to haunt you, asshat. So the evolution began news sources, of course, uh, with radio and print. And then we moved to government repositories. For some reason, they decided it would be a good idea to collect information and store it. Who knew? Uh, then you went to academic public publications where they began to collect data and uh, sort everything and put it together. Theoretically, they anonymized it. And now we've moved into the age of electronic databases where we know everything about you. These are so cool. Those, those are sexy. Those will get you laid, definitely. So the current forms and uses of those uh, are definitely tool sets, uh, websites you can go to, and of course databases you can get your hands on to, uh, depending on what your flavor is. So um, let's see. Who's ever used Multigo? Show of hands. Cool. Okay. So uh, Multigo is basically used. Oh, you put a click on the picture. Yeah. Last time I let you do this part. Uh, Multigo is used basically uh, or primarily to dig down on an organization. You can look at their who is records and DNS and IPs and emails and things of that nature. And uh, I'm going to have someone else come up here and stomp your ass too. But anyway, it's, uh, Multigo is really good for drilling down on a company uh, and by looking at email addresses and things uh, to, to comp uh, compile a large amount of data. Uh, who's used FOCA? Anyone in the house? If you haven't played with FOCA, FOCA is a lot of fun. Um, it basically, it uh, looks at the metadata in Microsoft Office uh, documents, PDFs. Uh, it will do open office. It uh, actually looks at the EXIF metadata in pictures. So you can begin to compile information uh, just in the hidden information in all the documents you can get a hold of. Uh, Randy from accounting puts out some sort of a document uh, and inside that it contains information about where it's stored on the local network. Uh, and it actually makes it to the outside world and gives me some information about how the interior network is built. So uh, that one's a really nice fun one to play with. Uh, search Diggity. Anyone use that one? Not in my backyard. Do what? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, apparently search daily isn't used as much as uh, everyone would uh, would like. But it, it basically is a, another form of being able to sift through data. It takes uh, uh, information from Bing and Google and other sources and sort of uh, uh, compiles it together and gives you a nice little interface to be able to get to it. So there are a lot of different uh, pieces of software out there. Uh, has anyone heard of Recorded Future? Okay, this is one of those that makes you kind of cringe a little bit. Uh, it's a temporal analysis engine. It uh, forecasts uh, and does analysis to predict future events based on uh, information from social networks and patterns that it can find. So they're able to go in and put some information in and actually determine what could possibly happen based on information that's flowing right now. So. And of course, there's there's Facebook. Who who's put their their music preferences on? F all right, who uses Facebook? It's all right. We're among friends. You can raise your hand. Big mistake. Yeah. Do we get a picture of that? Um, so if you've put on to Facebook, hey, I like REO Speedwagon, and for all the young guys in the crowd, that's really a rocking band. Uh, you know, hey, I went to REO Speedwagon. Well. I can go back in with uh, with graph search now and say, hey, I want to know anyone who lives in Tennessee who likes REO Speedwagon and blah, blah, blah. And I can then mine some data out and I guess uh, give you a jingle and say, hey, why don't you want to sit around and listen to records? At which point you would probably run. So uh, there are a lot of ways, you know, things, things are actually being put out there now for you to be able to just look at the data uh, and, and try to grind through it. And there are other websites, Social Mention, Spokio, uh, Meltwater. Um, I, I have my own personal preferences on, on what to use. Um, Johnny Long isn't here, but who's ever seen the Google Hacking uh, database? Okay. So uh, a bunch of uh, uh, things that people have put together. If you're looking for certain types of information, they've put query structures together for you to use. Really? Just ignore me. No. <laughs> this is what it's like to hang out with Noah and I at any point in time. Um, <laughs> So 
basically you, you have three different types of, of public data. You have cooperatively uh, boy, I need to drink some more. Cooperatively provided data, which would be this is my name and this is what I like, which is social networking. It's you know what I put on Facebook. Uh, I like REO Speedwagon and Smurfs. It's uh, things that you willingly. Give. You like Smurfs. I worry about you. It's um. It's things that you put out there that your personal preferences and things of that nature, or posts that you've made that can actually be mine to look at, but you've willingly given it up. Did I say that right? Okay. Yes. Okay, just checking. Giving it up. Things that are confidentially provided, something that has a session ID attached to it. I had to log in to get uh, give that information. Um, I filled out a questionnaire or survey. I said, yes, I'm more than happy to allow you to look at this information. Uh, I put something in there enough that it's uh, very identifiable, be it my address, my phone number, my credit card, things of that nature. So you have to actually, uh, it's a site with a privacy poly, a policy where you see I agree to it. So you've given that information up and you've agreed to their legal uh, statement there. And then you have the unknowingly provided or the, wait, where'd they get this from? So it's, uh, you know, the DMV records, it's uh, other information, maybe it's your medical records or, you know, how the fuck did they get my APGAR scores? So, you know, <laughs> he was slow at birth and it never got better. Uh, things that are third party generated, government and academia, things that are, uh, who, who's ever participated in something in college where you got paid 20 bucks to get an ass probing or something like that for research? Yeah. So they take that data and they put it into a database and they put it online and theoretically your name's not associated with it. But, so, um, so who publishes these data sets? Uh, a lot of time it's government. Uh, there's academia. Uh, now there's a commercial market now for data that's been pieced together and um, for a certain fee you can go in and cruise through that data. Uh, the more you pay, the more granular your data becomes and the more revealing it is. Uh, why are these data sets, the data sets published? Uh, for statistical analysis. It's coming up. Try not to laugh. Okay. Uh, for statistical analysis, uh, we want to go back and look at the information and do some predictions. Uh, looking for trends and patterns that are out there. Um, and retrospective outcomes is to, uh, <laughs> we, we, we struggled trying to find the proper example for this. We decided on which so is better, Viagra or Cialis. You know, we go back and look at the information and see the satisfaction. Well, I guess that's not the right terminology. I, I, I said Viagra. I, I said, no, I, I heard someone say Cialis, a buddy of mine, I swear. He said you. No, uh, no, no, it uh, wasn't me. It wasn't me. Uh, it, was a, it was a friend of mine, too. No, no, it wasn't. Evan? Where did Evan go? Oh, okay, he's hiding. That's good. So, um, and of course, this information is used for decision making for future things. Maybe it is product uh, design or coming up with something new, uh, whether it's actually going to be uh, uh, popular in any way, shape, or form. So, um, a lot of the things that are used in here, the tools and the websites, um, I don't do the math. That's this gentleman's uh, side of things. Uh, occasionally, I get asked to find things. You know, uh, who, who in the crowd who finished high school? Show of hands. It's okay. It's okay. All right. Who went to college? Now, who finished college? Okay. Okay. This is your crowd. So, anyway. He's got one degree. He's got two degrees. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Do you want to do that? No. I didn't I didn't I so, uh, uh, I did not finish college. I had a hell of a lot of fun while I was there, <laughs> per my GPA. Um, but what I did not learn while I was at college is what you can and can't do. Uh, it was not taught out of me when I, you know, oh, you can't do it that way. So I've never heard that before and I don't pay attention to it. So it makes it a lot easier for me to do some things like drill data on somebody. So occasionally I'll get a phone call and I'll get a couple pieces of criteria and they say find someone. And I've become very adept at doing so using all the open source information that's out there. So um, is anyone say that the Bellagio? This is audience participation. You're awake, right? Anyone's been there? 
cabana by the refrigerated pool. Absolutely wonderful. If any point in your lifetime you can make that happen, definitely do it. I'm in the sun. I've got the MacBook Air with me. I'm trying to get on the shitty wireless there that does not work. And there's a gentleman to my immediate right, and he notices I have a computer, which for all of us, that is typically the sticking point to, yeah, dude, my computer at home doesn't work. So, who's ever answered that question? So I'm, I'm in a, a swimsuit by the pool, and a guy starts talking to me. Okay, I'll bite, no problem. So we start discussing um, China, politics, the economy, fun things like that really make you happy. Uh, we have a few drinks and, and he says, you know, so you're in Vegas. Are you here for business or pleasure? And I said, well, currently for pleasure. I would think that would be the case if I'm by the pool. And he says, um, you know, so you're here for pleasure. That's good. And I said, well, actually, uh, in two or three weeks, I'm coming back out to the, you know, the largest hacker conference in the United States called DEF CON. And you could hear his asshole pucker in the seat, which <laughs> So, you know, it, that's one of those things where who, who in the crowd hasn't had to explain what that means? Just put your hand down, asshat. So, so I began to explain what DEF CON is. And it, since we didn't have the documentary, it was very interesting trying to explain it to him. Hearing impaired con. Yeah. Do what? It's the hearing impaired con. Yeah, that's yes. it. The hearing impaired con, definitely. But I got to spend some time trying to explain to a mundane actually what we do and why we get together for all this. And then his uh, jackass friend shows up who has come to Vegas to go to the Pawn Stars uh, place downtown. And he comes back, dude, I got to meet Haas. And I'm thinking, okay, let's go get a steak. So he becomes, you know, packs everything up. And he says, um, yeah, you know, we're going to head off and get a steak at so and so place. And really nice meeting you later. And I said, just a second. I said, your name is Brian. And your family owns a construction, civil construction firm in Seattle, Washington. And the guy says, y yeah. And I said, I'll send you an email to your work email within the next 48 hours. Again, you could hear his asshole pucker. <laughs> and I said, don't worry. I said, I'm going to show you. I have two bits of information on you. I don't have your last name. I don't have much more than that. But I'm going to send you an email and show you what's possible. So we went out and had a nice dinner, went out to the pool the next day, and at some point I thought, I gotta go find Brian. So I sit down on the bed and fire up the laptop, and in 45 minutes, I owned this guy. I have where he lives, pictures of his house, what he paid for, pictures of all of his relatives. I then took it upon myself to scan the exterior of his network and tell his system administrator, you probably should change this, it's not good to have this open. Brian never responded to the email, oddly enough. <laughs> I didn't think it was a problem. I didn't send him an invoice. I did it gratis. Um, but that's a good example of uh, I had two bits of information on the guy. Fortunately, one of them was unique enough. It allowed me to find him. I was able to correlate uh, civil construction, oddly enough, against the YouTube video which I was able to pick this guy out in and from there just went to town on him. So I guess if you get an email from a guy that you met by the pool who said he's a hacker and he has a picture of your house from the driveway, it might be a little bit unnerving. So. Was that legal? You that was probably. I don't give a shit. So anyway, <laughs> I did, hey, I don't have to have a court order and apparently no one else does. Yeah. So. But anywho, it's, uh, the open source side of it can be a lot of fun. Uh, one of the things that Noah is going to discuss is finding outliers in the data. Brian had enough for me to be able to find. Had he said my name is John, the problem would have been a little bit more difficult. If he said, yeah, I work at Starbucks. Okay, not as much of an outlier there, but given you know, time and effort and how much he pissed me off, I probably would have found him eventually. But based on the information, it took me about 45 minutes to track it down. So uh, if you ever get bored and you're by the pool at the Bellagio, just wait for someone to come by. It's a lot of fun. You like talking, you like talking to guys at pools, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have 
you ever been given a wedgie on stage? I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, you take the you take the little microphone there. Okay. Wow. Uh, Sky claimed that I'm going to talk about a lot of things that I don't know where he got that from, but uh, you're drunk. You're yeah. really, really drunk. Um, I know a little bit of math, some basic uh, addition, subtraction stuff, and yeah, I'm not really going to talk about anything really hard in advance because that's for smart people. But uh, data. Well, actually, a lot of these slides. I'm. Hello. Hello. There's an echo. I don't like that echo. I just I picked them out of other people's sets. Sorry. Have fun. Damn it. Okay. Um, so these slides are um, semi new to me, but uh, but I think I did make them. So let's go through them. Data science. This is a big field, right? Data science. The, the science of data. The science has been around for a long time. Data has been around for a long time. You put them together, and it's it's just, okay. It's it, well, no, but it, it's 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 emerged mostly over the past decade. To being really like the real data science, you know, information scientists have really that's been a, a past decade kind of thing, um, and and it sort of came out of the whole, you know, uh, you know, business analytics, competitive intelligence, all you know, it's it's it, like everything else driven by big business because they're just looking out for our best interest, um, and you know, so all of a sudden people who are like statisticians who are experts at you know, data mining and all these types of advanced math mathematical analyses are very valuable to big businesses and other entities that like to analyze large data sets. Are there other entities that collect lots of data? None that I've heard of. I'm, I'm, I haven't heard of any either, but I'm sure there are organizations out there that are collecting lots of data and doing something with this. But purely um, for benevolent reasons. What's that? Purely for benevolent reasons. Yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, it's it's mostly to enhance our shopping experience, right? Like you, other people who bought this also bought this, and uh, statistics just. You given data, you try to come up with a model, probability given a model, let's try to predict the data. Simple concept. Okay. Next slide. Here's a little graphic demonstrating what I just said and it's useless. Okay. Historic data model future. Ignore. Data sources. Okay. Um, these are some just random examples of readily available public data sets. And we've actually gone from like having databases of information to databases that are cataloging the databases of information and it's crazy. It just, it's increasing exponentially. And um, my favorite was, well, Freebase I came across when I was uh, searching for something else. But apparently it's a database. So um, I also like InfoChimps too. I don't know why. That just it's just a funny name. Okay. Um, big data. Not just data, but big data. Buzzword? Reality. Who thinks it's a buzzword? Not that, oh my God, not, I was thinking more buzzword. Some people and the other people think it's really like a legitimate real thing. Okay. That's cool. I don't, I don't judge, you know. Um, well, um, I don't know if, I mean, it's hard to define what that really means, big data. Like, um, you know, is it big data? Is it in the cloud? It's a large it typeface. How, what, what's the cutoff for being big? You know, eight inches, ten inches. What? When does it become uh, really big data? Sky, how big is how big is your data? My data is huge. Okay. I, I work with a very small data set, and I'm okay with that. But and, and at this point, this is yet another presentation we cannot put in our portfolio for public speaking. Oh boy, that's true. But no, so technically, it, it, at least what I found is that that it's sort of defined as, as big data is in these incredibly large amounts of data that are being rapidly generated and have lots of variability. Okay, uh, you know, sure, but it's. Um, 
it's still big data, but uh, but the interesting thing about it from our perspective is that the creation of big data has also sort of um, brought forth the development of tools to work with big data, to analyze these big data sets, uh, visual representation, doing number crunching on them. So the, all these new mathematical and advanced platforms for performing all kinds of functions on big data, which is of interest to us. And we're going to look at that in a few minutes. Or not. Okay. Terminology. That means sort of that of defining words, kind of. Okay. We Google it backstage. A lot of Googling. All right. So depending who you talk to or what publication you read or, uh, you know, what book you – anonymization, de-identification, basically mean the same thing. De-anonymization, re-identification, basically mean the same thing, kind of. And, I mean, there will be some, again, some studies, some groups that will distinguish for the purposes of our talk. It's, yeah, they're synonymous but sort of antonyms, opposite meaning. Yeah. So, um, uh, the, so you reverse one of these processes, you get to the other. Pretty simple. Anyone with fifth grade background should get that. Okay. Sweet. On. Moving on. Okay. See, it's, it's, this is real stuff, simple stuff. Okay. Data. When it's initially collected, a lot of times it contains personally identifiable information like social security number or address or something else, uh, your name, that would be personally identifiable. Um, so there needs to be some kind of process that takes this data and makes it sort of anonymous. I love you too. Oh, what was that, 10? No, it's 10. Holy crap. Okay, it's time to talk super food fast. Dude, you took up all the damn time. You so damn. Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. So. We need to find a way to make this personal identify information an why you, okay make it into anonymous public data so there's a couple different ways that can be done in general um, just removing variables altogether um, a variable that actually is unique enough to be identifying by itself like uh, you know I've had eight kids and been in porn, that's, you know, Optimom or something, you know, whatever, it's just that, remove those. Um, global recoding, local suppression where, again, recoding certain variables or uh, suppressing certain values in different columns for, that are really identifiable, a whole bunch of different ways to, yeah, okay, to make, no, anonymization metrics. We have to figure out a way to look at the way we anonymize data and figure out, hey, is this working? Is this like actually making the data anonymous? And at the same time making it usable. So that whole utility versus actual anonymity, it, I mean that's a balance right there. So two metrics, uh, disclosure risk, likelihood of revealing data in the public set, and then information retention, how the utility of that data. So we take away all this information, ah, it's anonymous, but is it still usable? So that's the balance you have to strike. Yeah. It's a tough problem. You want to minimize disclosure risk, maximize information retention. Easier said than done, but information entropy. Anyone familiar with this? Entropy? Yes, yes. And not the entropy from therm thermodynamics, which I spent a long semester trying to go through. So. Yeah, information theory. So the idea is is the uh, oh my god, ten minutes. I this is I have like a million slides to go through. So I should just start. Uh, basically, uh, the um, amount of information that can be the number of states that can reveal the total number of possibilities for a given state. Like the uh, I actually I use an eight sided die in an example that obviously you can roll and you get like one through eight because it's got eight sides. So, yeah, into information entropy is going to be three bits and, yeah, so population of the world, let's just say eight billion, that's like 33 bits. Awesome website, 33bits.org. Very good. Uh, anyway, all right, I'm going to cruise over lots of stuff. Audience participation, uh, everyone just get up and participate in some way real quick because we got to uh, do something, get up and dance. No, I don't. 
No, no, wait. Uh, no, uh, should we do this? Do we have time for this or what? I think we have all the time we want. Really? Can you be, uh, you, you got that poll? I didn't, I didn't do that. I, I don't know. I'm wrong. Let me, let me get the radio and get a couple of red shirts in there. Yeah, no, good. Dude, we're on slide like 26. I mean, uh, we were going to look at audience participation and kind of go through and sort people out based on some criteria. We can skip it if you want, or if you want to stand up and raise your hand. You want to do that? Okay. All right. Cool. Okay. How about this? All right. First question. Everyone here who this is their first time attending DEF CON, please stand up. Noob. All right. Noob, 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 okay. noob. Now come up with a uh, you know, West Coast, East Coast, or age cutoff. Okay. Or Tell you what. Anyone from the East Coast, stay standing. Everyone else, sit down. You guys paid the highest airfares. Thank you very much. We enjoyed that. Yours. Any, anyone here from New Jersey? Oh. Wait, I didn't say what to do. I just said anyone from New Jersey? Oh. No. Simon says. No, no. Okay. Yo, no, you, got, you can sit down. Sit down. Yeah. Okay. What do we got? Like seven, eight, ten people? Uh, what are the states below New Jersey? No, no, no. Oh, well, I guess I, uh, I was going to say I, you I, had I, a hangover, but I guess it's not uh, publicly available data unless we query everyone in the room. Yeah. I would say anyone who's male stay standing, but that's pretty much everyone. Any female? I tell you, if you're female, raise your hand. Shitty data set. Never mind. Um, no, that, and that, and actually, that would be the unit. There we go. Is no. Nope. Okay, so, I yeah. tell you what. Anyone, twenty years, uh, uh, say twenty nine years of age or younger. So remain standing. All the old fucks in the room sit down. That's good. How we got left? One, two, three, four. Yours. Oh, man. Um, anyone here from sort of living below North Carolina, South Carolina border? Sit down. Or do we, did we do New Jersey and up? Yeah, so, so we're now between like North Carolina, Jersey. So we, who, do, who do we have? No, you said New Jersey and up, still stay standing. So you're in the upper quadrant there. I mean, I mean, I don't know what the fuck. So I did age. We can't do male, female. Who got laid last night? Okay, that's a bad data set too. So how many people are we up to? Who who is remaining standing? Count them off. I can't see for the lights. How many people do you think are in this room right now? Seven, eight hundred, thousand, something like that. I don't know. Of that, we're down to what? Four people, three people who remain standing, and how many questions? Well, that was, that was like five uh, questions. Uh, well, it was so it was maybe what four or five questions, but the uh, entropy for those questions. So what? North, uh, West Coast, East Coast. Entropy there is one bit. Um, we had what was the other question? I wouldn't what? Pay yet. I do. Yeah. First time at DEF CON. Uh, first time at DEF CON. Information entropy there is two bits. Two bits. Yeah. Anyone above what New Jersey and above? Is that what you said? Yeah, pretty much. Actually, I think all the questions were like two bit. Yeah, entropy question. So five. Yeah. Uh, so basically five bits of entropy, yeah. and we were able to narrow down the population to what? Three people. Three, four people. So, and, and it's all innocuous information. But the point is, is that a lot, the combination of all this innocuous information can actually be quite identifiable. And yeah, and scary. thank you for participating. A round of applause for yourselves. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, how much time left? Just keep going. Three. Okay. I have um, 20 slides to do in three minutes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Scott. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, outliers, values, traits, anything that outside a normal distribution, yeah. So single outliers, easy to pick up if you have them in combinations or sets which are unique, a little bit trickier to detect but mathematically possible. Um, graphical example of an outlier was, this is an IQ of probably here, everyone in the audience and um, I was an outlier, kind of, I'm special. Um, data set intersections, Venn diagrams, who's heard of them? Yeah. 
Okay, you have sets of data. You have set A, set B. What's the intersection there? A, look at that A and B, amazing. Now you add C, look what you have. A and C, B and C. And what's in the middle? Holy crap. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> That's a math <laughs> joke, isn't it? That's the math thing happening. Yeah, okay. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, well, that's a good point. Okay. Uh, unique variable overlap. You know what? I just, yeah, if you have outliers for different types of data and they, you know what? Just be, um, move on mathematical attacks uh, with three minutes. Hmm. Yeah, that's not. Uh, that's just slow down. Just do it. Who do, I, all right. Well, dude, you're it's the, you're the good one. All, right, all right. You make sure that I got it covered. Sweet. Um, inferential analysis and um, an example of it. Uh, remember the target, targeted advertising, the uh, teenage woman who was pregnant and was getting all this targeted advertising based on her purchasing behavior to her household and then her dad was upset that she was getting targeted ads for like Enfamil and diapers when this is my teenage daughter, she's not pregnant and got all pissed off at the manager and anyway she was pregnant and that's how he found out was through target. Yeah, that's not a good way to tell your parents you're pregnant through target. Yeah. Um, that's not how I'll tell my parents. No. So, uh, uh, database linkage, uh, classic example is the whole Netflix IMDb thing that was, yeah, I'm sure you all remember that. Okay. U.S. Census data. This happens. Uh, they don't knock on your door anymore. I think there's like, do they? I don't think they. When did they stop knocking on your I door? I don't answer the door. Me and my 12 roommates. That's just two. They still do they really? Yeah. Man. All right. Another, another reason not to answer the door. Um, actually, so a researcher in 1990, this Latanya uh, <clears throat> Sweeney came up with uh, a way to actually just using information from the census data, which was date of birth, gender, zip code. 87% of the population was unique. Amazing. And it's just based on principles of information entropy. Amazing. Uh, exposed healthcare records of the governor of Massachusetts at the time, which was kind of funny. And uh, screw you weld. Yeah. So, um, and applied entropy. So how she did it, I mean, zip code. There's 43,000 zip codes in the U.S. roughly. Birth dates, 365. Birth year. About 70 different, the age range of 70 and two different genders, hermaphrodites were excluded. So 30 bits of entropy, which includes all of the population of the U.S. Simple as that. Um, PGP. Ever heard of PGP? Personal Genome Project? Okay. So uh, this, this is another program going on where people voluntarily submit all this genetic information about themselves. They want to, uh, to correlate genotype, phenotype to learn about themselves. And I, oh, dude. Look, he, deal with it. I, he, anyway, again, this is the project's gone bad. Yeah. No one saw that. That didn't happen. Um, pass. Yeah. Uh, record linkage. Uh, the, is this look, a cool diagram? Uh, you got to see this. Take care of him, dude. He's stressing me out. Um, uh, record cool linkage. Box. So this is where you have a you have a public data set and a private data set. Public data set and maybe has metadata that's publicly available and might have some innocuous but identifying information about an individual. The private data set, well, that's got personally identifiable information that you don't want people to know. The record linkage, it's possible to actually correlate the two and discover sort of these anonymous or so-called anonymous traits about a person by combining the two data sets. And I'll get to the, mathematically how to do that in a second or not if I get kicked off stage. So, uh, all right, flying through these slides, vectors, this is where it gets really, this is where I get into the math. So we either go to sleep or those who, anyone math porn? Okay, your data points now become a vector. Your record, attributes, yeah, boom. Okay, we're now with the only vector math. Take it one step further, the whole database, it's a matrix, boom. Records, people, attributes, 
database. Okay, cool. And again, we now can apply matrixy math to this, matrixy inversions and dot products, Gram-Schmidt orthonormalization, all kinds of wonderful things like that. And actually, so a cosine similarity, actually measuring the angular difference between two vectors or matrices can actually find the similarities in large data sets. Um, yeah, boring, 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 boring. Math, math, math. Uh, the one cool thing that we did do is, hold on, uh, so well this is the actual mathematical formula for the similarity function in case any of you want to try this at home or see me after class and we'll discuss it. Um, yeah. Venn diagrams, this is really cool. Uh, so to be able to visually understand and represent and identify overlapping data sets, we had two data sets, A, B, multiple variables that were in common, that were the same descriptive traits. Looked at the intersections of them, noted here by these little lines across. Okay, so these data sets, independent descriptive variables, and they're in common. Then we take those little sections that are in common and we then the bends, as we say. So take those and watch this. Bam, 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 right there. Look at that. And then, based on that, we can actually now, actually the, the, the subspace defined by that area is the intersection of all of these groups and actually identifies records for which all the attributes are identical and actually identifies an actual person. Um, dude, hey, got, hold, wait, we got, um, um, okay, so, we're, we're, so, uh, in summation, uh, the rising side of dark, uh, dark side of ozone. Okay, so, um, blah, 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 so, yeah. Emergence of big data. Big problem, big data. Um, lots of tools are being used for analysis and visualization. More data sets are being developed and this is the mathematical attacks are going to become easier and easier. It's another weapon for social engineering toolkits because this is information about individuals that we're going to be able to ascertain and they're not going to be aware of it and they're not voluntarily giving this information but it's going to be actually sort of re-identified re about them from these anonymous data sets and uh, so cool for us, bad for them. Uh, um, what can we do to defend against the dark arts? Um, proper sanitization methods. There are not, they're not, pro there's no way to, well, there's no standards to actually implement uh, anonymization metrics that actually are, provide the utility uh, requirements but also provide true anonymity. They don't exist. So we need access controls or my recommendation, recommendation is to falsify everything and just make shit up. So that's, uh, I would do. And conclusion, yeah, God, yeah just, uh, yeah. Questions and answers will be yeah. handled at the bar. You guys are buying. Sorry. That Ladies and gentlemen, the full presentation will be seen at Sky Dog Con later this year. Absolutely. Can We're I have a round of applause for the speaker goons for letting us go a little long? Thank you. How can we take out Sky Dog and his buddy? Thank you. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's totally cool.